Let's have a look at neutrinos and how and why they were originally postulated. So you'll recall that there's uh, two types of beta decay. There was a beta minus decay in which a neutron inside the nucleus, a neutron would change into a proton. And then there was the positron decay, which was really kind of the opposite process, in which a proton would change into a neutron inside the nucleus. And of course, in the regular beta decay, it's an electron or a beta particle that's emitted. And in the positron decay, it's a positron that's emitted. Now, of course, scientists are going to measure the kinetic energy of the electrons and the positrons as they're fired out of these uh, nuclei. Now, a neutron has a certain amount of mass energy. And we would take its mass, and we'd multiply by c squared to find out what that mass energy is. I'm making up special units of mass energy just for this purpose so that the, the numbers come out nice. But a neutron in these special units, let's say it has a mass energy of 10,000. Now a proton, it's got a little less mass and its mass energy in those units would come out to be 9,986. 9, which means you've got 14 units the difference between 10,000 and 9,986 is 14. So that there's 14 units of energy that aren't accounted for. But of course, we've got an electron that's going to come out here, and it's got a certain amount of mass energy. That turns out to be 5. So that means we're left with 14 minus 5 equals 9 units of energy that are left over for the kinetic energy of that electron. Now, when scientists started measuring the kinetic energy of those emitted electrons, they didn't get the value of 9. They got a range of values that went anywhere from 0 all the way to 9 and did so in a continuous spectrum. So they got values that ranged anywhere from 0 to 9 in a continuous manner. And that was a surprise. And then as scientists did more and more calculations and experiments, they realized that momentum and angular momentum were missing, as well as some mass energy. And so then the idea was, well, maybe there's some sort of particle that's carrying away this extra energy and, and mass. But it must be some sort of particle that's really, really hard to detect, that just kind of goes through everything without being detected. In 1933, Enrico Fermi postulated the existence of the neutrino. And he, he said exactly how much mass it would have, very, very little as it turns out, and exactly how much charge it would have, exactly zero. So it's basically a particle with almost no mass and no charge. And that means that it will just pass through anything. It just basically does not interact with matter. And that makes it very, very difficult to detect. And it wasn't until 1955, so you're talking over 20 years later, that Rhines and Cohen came up with an experiment and made the first detection of the neutrino and confirmed its mass and properties. So just giving you an example here, uh, here is, here's the overall reaction any time that you've got a beta decay, regular beta decay, and here's the overall reaction anytime you've got uh, positron decay. One thing you want to notice here is that if you've got a beta particle being emitted, which is a regular particle, then it will always come with a that bar on the, on the top means it's an antiparticle. So this would be an anti-neutrino, whereas this positron, it's an antiparticle. Beta plus is an antiparticle. And so it gets fired out with a regular neutrino, not an anti-neutrino. So these always end up being opposite in terms of being particle and antiparticle. A few other things to notice in, in the uh, equation here, that the charge number, of course, goes up by 1 in the beta decay because it's a neutron changing into a proton. And the mass number doesn't change at all. And notice also that if we take a plus 7 here and a minus 1, they add up to 6 here. So the charge is conserved. And over here for the positron decay, of course the two numbers once again, they add up to 6. And of course you've got a proton in this case changing into a neutron. And that means you're going to decrease by 1 in charge here. But make up for it by emitting a 
positively charged beta particle. And once again, mass number never changes. So look for those general patterns uh, in these uh, positive and negative beta particle decays. So a quick IB question. Read it over, try it out, and then come back for the answer. Okay, so hopefully you said the correct answer is C when you've got a regular beta decay, the regular type particle, then you do get the anti-neutrino. This answer B here, it's just going in the wrong direction. If they had said the charge of the daughter nucleus is more than the parent nuclei, that would be a true statement, but they said less, so that's a false statement. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.